Hey everybody, and we're back for parallel circuits. So let's go ahead and move forward. Um, we are going to talk parallel circuits for the moment here. I'm going to talk a little bit in the screen sharing on the characteristics before we get started here. Uh, oops. It's on the wrong piece. Give me one second. Sorry about that, guys. And, oop. okay, sorry. <laughs> Having technical difficulties. Here we go. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we talked screen, uh, sorry, series circuit rules. Now let's get into what the series circuit, sorry, would look like. Apologize for that. Um, again, in a series circuit, uh, current must flow through all of the resistors before it comes back, no matter how many resistors there are, if they're in line, uh, the way that they're wired up, meaning from one into the next, into the next, into the next, then that is uh, going to constitute a series circuit. But if it's not, it might be wired up as a parallel circuit, meaning that each uh, sorry, each branch or each load has its own path from power to ground, which is uh, really nice. So uh, what I didn't mention in the last video was that if any load in a series circuit um, goes out, a light bulb filament goes out, uh, it will disconnect and it will create no continuity for the rest of the whole circuit. That's a big problem, right? So if I've got one light bulb that goes out, then that means I don't have any light bulbs that turn on for that circuit, uh, no matter how many there are, uh, which is why we don't wire our headlights in parallel, or I'm sorry, in series, because if, if I had, if I'm driving at night on my way in the middle of the desert to Vegas, and I've got one light bulb that goes out, then that means I have no light bulbs that work because one light bulb goes out, it takes continuity away from the rest of the circuit, uh, which means I have no continuity, which means I have no light bulbs that work because one went out. And that would really suck. So a lot of circuits, in fact, most circuits in automotive are gonna be wired in what we call parallel, meaning that uh, each load has, uh, its own path to ground, or current has more than one path to flow for however many loads there are. If there's two loads, current has two paths to ground. Uh, if there's three loads, four loads, five loads, each one has its own path to ground. Now, um, each load is on its own branch, also known as legs or shunts. Uh, if you look in the picture here, we've got two branches or legs or shunts um, now this one, the current coming out of the power source is the same as the amount of current coming back. However, in between it gets split up and it gets split up depending on resistance. Again, that, that teeter-totter doesn't change. So in each branch, current is going to be uh, different. So if I have more resistance on one branch, the current's going to be low. If I have less resistance on another branch, then the current's going to be higher. So uh, those are just some characteristics. Let's talk about some rules for our parallel circuit or our parallel circuit here. Uh, total circuit resistance at TCR. It's not the sum of resistors this time. So it is generally going to be always lower than the lowest resistor in the entire circuit. So if I have one resistor that has its own branch that's 100 ohms, and I've got another resistor that's 50 ohms, and then I've got another that's 10, and then another branch that has one ohm. That means that the total circuit resistance in that entire circuit is going to be less than one ohm. And that has to do with the way electricity works. So uh, electricity will always take the path of least resistance because it's lazy, like me sometimes. So if it has the opportunity to take a path of less resistance, it's going to. So in a parallel circuit, what dictates how much amperage goes through that whole entire circuit is going to be the lowest resistor. Uh, and hopefully that makes a little bit more sense as I draw the circuit. Source voltage 
is the same. That doesn't change throughout our parallel circuits. What does change is how much voltage drop changes across each branch. And since each branch has its own path to ground, it doesn't have to share that voltage anymore. So in the series circuit in the last video, we drew uh, the voltage, no matter what, had to get distributed across each load. So I only drew two loads, but if there was three, then voltage would have to get distributed across three loads. If there was four, then it would have to get distributed across four loads, so on and so forth. So in a parallel circuit, it's not that way. In a parallel circuit, source voltage gets dropped on each branch which also means that nothing has to get shared, which is super nice. So it's almost like uh, a household with, uh, let's say, I don't know, I grew up in a household where my parents were divorced. Um, but let's say you start in a household where your parents are together and uh, you have, you're just an only child. Everything, all the money, everything is spent on you. Well, when you have a younger sibling or a sibling that comes after you, you'll notice that, or you have noticed that uh, the money has to get distributed now. So you have the same amount of source money, right? Your parents didn't start making more money because they had more kids, but you had another mouth to feed. So that same paycheck money had to now, instead of getting distributed across one kid, gets distributed across two kids. Or if you want to explain it in any other ways, uh, however many significant others you have, <laughs> that's how much your paycheck has to get distributed across, right? So that's how a series circuit works. In a parallel circuit, it works a little bit more like a divorced child's household. So um, what's sort of nice is that uh, the power source now gets distributed across uh, each load. Let me show you how that works visually because it's actually a lot easier to show you than explain it. Um, but one more thing before I finish is that um, total circuit amperage or TCA is instead, even though I said it coming out of the power source is the same as coming back into the power source in between, it does get split up. And how it gets split up is uh, depending on the resistance in each branch but the sum of all current values or the sum of each branch current value is going to equal your total circuit resistance. So again, whatever comes out of the battery is gonna come back into the battery as far as amperage is concerned. Before I get into wiring diagrams, let me back up here. I'm gonna take us out of screen share here. Hello again. And then uh, we are gonna talk about parallel circuits real quick on the whiteboard. Um, sorry about the lighting in here, uh, is not great. Uh, and so as the sun changes, my video quality gets worse. So in a series circuit, we already showed there's multiple loads in a row. In a parallel circuit, let me, I'll use the same color here. Um, I'm going to have multiple branches. So instead of everything having to go through each load, uh, I like to think of series circuits as, um, if you live in a little bit more of a rural area, say you live uh, in a canyon, right, where there is one route in and there is one route out, and that's it, right? So if there's a car accident, a fire, or anything that happens on that road, you're a block. There is no movement going on. A parallel circuit's a little bit more like a suburban neighborhood where there might be multiple routes in and out of the neighborhood. So if one gets blocked, there's always another way out. So um, I'm just gonna draw two branches for the moment. I will draw an example of a three branch in a little bit here, but let's say I have two light bulbs. The way we wire a parallel circuit, like I said, looks a little bit different than a series circuit. You'll notice that each one has its own ground. Now, I don't have to draw it this way. I can draw it like this. And it's exactly the same. But it doesn't matter. How either way, it's, it's exactly the same. It means that electricity, if it can't go through this way, let's say the circuit broke here, it still can go to ground through this way. So no matter what, what's really nice in a parallel circuit if something happens to one load, it does not affect the other load. So let's uh, let's do an example here. We'll start off with a nice and easy one. 
let's say this one is two ohms and this one is two ohms. Easy enough, right? Well, in a series circuit, we'd add those up to get our TCR, but that's not the case. So to get TCR in a parallel circuit, there's two ways we can do this. I realize I screwed my battery here, so let me fix that. I will show you one way with a, uh, I'm gonna show you one way with a, uh, a formula. It's a little bit harder. It, the math is not super hard. It's, it's actually fairly easy. But I'm gonna show you that way, and I'm gonna show you the easier way, um, and the way I actually prefer, just because, again, I'm lazy sometimes, um, if at all possible. So we'll show you the formula, and then we'll go ahead and show you the, uh, I, it's called the hand method. I believe your book calls it the hand method as well. The formula to get TCR in a parallel circuit, and I know you're thinking, wow, well, to get TCR in the other circuit, the series circuit is so much easier, you're right. You're right, um, but in a parallel circuit, it's not. So to get TCR in a parallel circuit, there's a little formula that is R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. Easy enough, right? Well, let me back up here. Let me explain R. When we talk about R, we're talking about the resistor number. So in this case, we can call this one R1, and we can call this one R2. So it would be the value for R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2 gives us our TCR. So I'm going to erase this because we're going to solve for that TCR here in a moment. Um, in fact, I'll erase the whole thing. So if it's R1 times R2, that's R1 times R2, 2 times 2 over R1 plus R2, then 2 plus two, easy enough, right? Two times two gives us four. Two plus two happens to also give us four. Well, we know that four divided by four gives us one. The TCR for this circuit is one. And I wanna back up here because a moment ago I did mention that TCR is always gonna be lower than the lowest resistor. We can double check that. Is my TCR lower than the lowest resistor? Well, they're both the same value, but they're two ohms, right? So I do know that one is lower than my lowest resistor. So I know that I'm correct there. That's how you get TCR. So I'm gonna throw up TCR here as one ohm. So we don't forget that. But I'm gonna show you the easy way. So the only problem with that formula is that uh, it only works for two branches. If I had three, four, five, six loads, I'd have to use another formula. So the formula for that is one over, and it's actually a reciprocal formula, so it's one over, one over, but uh, one over, one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3 for however many loads I have. We call this the reciprocal formula. So um, I'm not gonna get into it because your electrical class is gonna get way more into this formula. You're gonna need to know it later on for when you do go to solve for the voltage because sometimes in the book it won't give you the voltage. I'm not concerned about that right now because in the tunic class we know exactly how much voltage we have all the time. I'm not, I'm not concerned with that. Uh, but what I would have to do is I would have to R1 and R2 in this case would be one over two, one over two. And then if I had third, fourth, fifth branch, I would put whatever those are, find the lowest common denominator, figure that out, then use the reciprocal to figure out my TCR. If you're a math person, it's not that big of a deal. If you are already like, whoa, this is giving me anxiety, don't even worry about it. Pretend like I didn't even talk about it. We will get into that and walk you through that step-by-step -step in an electrical class. I don't want to get hung up in this because this, this is a tune-up in an electrical class. This isn't in your performance class. The reason why I'm even going through this stuff is because I want you guys to understand the fundamentals of electricity um, without getting too crazy. So that's a reciprocal formula if you have more branches. Let me show you a way that is so much easier. As long as you know the voltage, you can use something called the hand method. 
Um, and before you guys get crazy in figuring out what you think the hand method means, um, the hand method is simply doing this. And I pretend like this one doesn't exist. And I treat each one as if its own, it, as if it's its own uh, simple circuit. So what's really nice is instead of solving for TCR with the hand method, we don't solve for resistance first. Instead, we work backwards and we solve for amperage first in each branch, and then we'll work back to solving uh, total circuit resistance. So let me show you how that works. So if I pretend like this branch doesn't exist, and I want to know how much amperage is running through this one branch, that's easy enough. I can do my own slot pie chart. Again, what are we looking for? And I know we're looking for amperage. Um, I do know that my source voltage is 12 volts, and I know that the resistance of the branch I'm looking at is just the one bulb, so it's two ohms. I know that 12 divided by two gives me six amps in this one branch, right? Uh, easy enough because the math is exactly the same. We're going to pretend like this one doesn't exist and do the same exact math. Luckily enough, we already did it, so we know uh, that 12 volts divided by 2 amps here gives me 6 amps in this branch. 6 amps, again, we're solving for amperage first in a parallel circuit with the hand method. And, and again, this is not the only way, but in my opinion, it's the easiest way. And again, I'm lazy, so 6 amps in six amps. Remember I said total circuit amperage coming out of the battery is the same as coming in, but in between in the parallel circuit, it does split up. Well, in the end, they are gonna come together. So all I need to do to find TCA in this circuit is add up the branch amperage values in each one. So if I had multiple uh, well, of course, it's a parallel circuit, so I have multiple branches, but if I had three, four, five, six branches, all I need to do is figure out the amperage going through each branch and then add it all up, and that gives me TCA. So in this case, I've got six amps plus six amps, giving me a total circuit amperage, oops, apologize here, and my mind's on six, is going to give me a total of six amps in the entire circuit. That's really nice, and here's why. I don't know my TCR yet, but I do know my TCA. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this here. Again, if you don't understand how I got any of those numbers, please rewind and try to re re watch, re watch the videos. And uh, hopefully if you, have, if you have any questions, let me know um, and I will try to address them as we go. I'll do a couple examples here before I finish up. The TCA, now that again we're working backwards, we're finding TCA for the hand method rather than TCR. Now that I know, again, Ohm's law says if I know any two, I can figure out my third. Well, what are we looking for? Resistance. So I'm going to put a question mark in my resistance category. I do know that I have 12 volts in my source voltage battery, and I do know, since I already figured this out, I have a uh, total circuit amperage of 12 amps in the entire circuit. Well, if I've got 12 volts divided by 12 amps, that means I have a total circuit resistance of 12, or I'm sorry, one ohm. And we already figured that out. We're just double checking our answer using a different method. So TCR, as we remember back to the formula that I showed you guys of R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2, we already figured out it was one ohm the hand method will give you the same exact answer. As long as you have voltage, you can figure out the others. Um, you just need to make sure that you have voltage so you can use the hand method. And again, uh, the reciprocal method will be taught in the electrical class just because uh, it, it focuses on a different set of skills in that class. So let's try something that's a little bit harder, right? If not, go ahead and rewind and watch that again and then we'll try something a little bit harder. But uh, let's do let's do one where the resistance values are not the same. Um, again, you are more than welcome in this exercise to do the formula method. I am going to demonstrate from here on out the hand method just because it's easier for this class. Um, let's go ahead and do something like. 
let's do uh, let's do three ohms in this bulb and six ohms in this bulb. Uh, and I'm going to add in something here. So I want you guys to tell me what TCR is, and I want you to or quick calculate uh, what TCA is for the circuit. And then on top of that, I'm going to add. Uh, let's see, the voltage drop for this one would be V1. I want you guys to tell me just what V2 would be. Uh, and you're like, wait, but you didn't tell us how to figure that out. I actually did. It was in the circuit characteristics or the circuit rules. It's super easy. Um, but I'm going to give you a second to think about it because I want you to try to go back in your memory and think about what did she say? Uh, so I would like you guys to pause the video for a moment and calculate this out on your own just for good measure and then uh, oh, i'm going to get rid of this up here because it's not being answered anymore um and then in a moment here we'll calculate this out together so this is where you hit pause and i will separate this here Okay, so you should be hitting play back after you've already calculated this out. Um, now that we know how to do this, uh, using the hand method, we are going to pretend like our second branch doesn't exist, right? So I'm going to make an Ohm's Law pie chart just for branch one. What are we looking for again? We're looking for amperage for each branch. Um, I do know that I've got 12 volts of source voltage. I do know that the resistance, oops, I told you about that. Um, the resistance right here for this one volt is three ohms. I'm gonna go ahead and put three ohms here. Um, all I have to do is divide. 12 divided by three tells me that in just this one branch, I have four amps, right? Next, nice and easy. Well, my source voltage isn't gonna change but my resistance is going to change. So using the hand method, we're going to pretend now that this one doesn't exist. And we're just looking for the amperage in this one branch. Well, I know I've got six ohms. So I'm going to go ahead and put six ohms in my category here. 12 divided by six ohms tells me that in just this one branch, I have two amps running through it. Higher resistance, less amperage. Less resistance more amperage, right? Kind of back to the teeter-totter. It's that same fundamental knowledge. And again, TCA is easier to calculate first. So since we kind of already did that, all we need to do is now add these suckers up. Four amps plus two amps is going to give me a total circuit amperage of six amps coming out of my power source um, determined by all of my resistance here. Now, uh, I do want to just clarify here that that means I've got six amps coming out of my power source. Six amps, six amps, six amps. Once my circuit splits, this is when my amperage splits up. But by the time it comes back to ground, by the time it comes back to ground, it still comes back to the battery as six amps, just so we're all clear here. Um, now, Ohm's Law pie chart says that I can use any two to figure out my third. So I want to know what TCR is, total circuit resistance. I need to fill in, first off, what am I looking for? I'm looking for resistance, right? I do know that my source voltage is 12 volts. I do know that my amperage for the entire circuit is six amps. So therefore, I am going to, uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and switch videos here. Oh, actually, hold on. All right, so I'm going to have 6 amps for the entire circuit divided by 12 volts is going to give me a total circuit resistance of 2 ohms in the circuit. Um, again, checking out that if I want to double check my resistance here, we can look at I've got a six ohm bulb and a three ohm bulb. The rule for my parallel circuits is that I have, uh, my, my total circuit resistance needs to be lower than the lowest resistor. Well, I'm pretty sure that two ohms is lower than three ohms, right? And that's where we're at on that uh, to double check our answer for TCR. And that's easy enough to figure out. I'll do one more branch. Uh, or, or one more parallel circuit with three branches just to test you guys. 
Um, but one more thing before we finish. We never talked about V2, right? Well, let's talk a little bit about where voltage drops. So voltage is going to drop where work is being done. Is it dropping across the fuse? Nope. Or across the switch? Nope. No work is being done. No light is being emitted. No heat is being uh, emitted. No noise. Um, any of that stuff. So no voltage has dropped yet. No pressure has dropped. So if I was going to check, I should have 12 volts right here, right? Throughout the circuit, nothing has dropped. Now, once we go to do work, the voltage will come down here and it doesn't have to split. I have source voltage here and I have source voltage here as well because no work has been done there yet. However, here and here work is being done before it goes to ground. So I will have 12 volts coming in and am I allowed any pressure going back into the battery? No. So uh, that means coming out of my bowl on each branch, I am gonna have zero volts. Same here, source voltage coming in and zero volts coming out. So no matter what, in a parallel circuit, what's really nice, no matter what, voltage drop is always the same. It always uses the entire amount. And so in our case, it's gonna use 12 volts every single time. On the first branch, it's gonna use 12 volts. On the second branch, and if I had a million branches, it will use 12 volts across each branch. So I don't even have to calculate it. V2, V3, V4, V whatever, it doesn't matter. It's always going to equal source voltage. And that is how you figure out a parallel circuit. Uh, now let's throw one more out there just for good measure. Um, let's do three branches just to make things fun. Let's do uh, Let's do four ohms, two ohms, and we'll do another four ohm bulb. I want you to tell me TCR and TCA. Go ahead and pause the video right now. All right, did you figure it out? Cool. So uh, again, working backwards, I'll use another color here. We just need to use the hand method and we'll pretend like these don't even exist. Remember, amperage for each one. So if I do my Ohm's Law pie chart, I know we're looking for, uh, sorry, not looking for resistance, we're looking for amperage. So pretend that these don't exist. I've got a source voltage of 12 volts. I've got four ohms in this one branch. That gives me a branch amperage of three amps. Right? Now let's go down to our second branch here. We'll pretend like the others don't exist. And that gives us two ohms. Well, 12 divided by two gives us a branch amperage of six amps. And we already did the math for four, but let's pretend like we didn't. Um, we're calculating for four ohms, so we'll go ahead and put four in there. We know that, again, it's gonna be three amps, 12 divided by four, three amps. Well, all I need to do to find TCA, add these up, right? So six times three, or times six, six plus three plus three, that's gonna give us a TCA of 12 amps. Uh, all we need to do is work backwards to find TCR. We know we're, uh, we're looking for resistance. We know we've got 12 volts of source voltage. We know we've got 12 amps of TCA or total circuit amperage. 12 divided by 12. We have a TCR of one amp. Did you notice that the more branches we seem to add, the less resistance we seem to have for our TCA? That is not an accident. And it doesn't necessarily have to do with the numbers but uh, parallel circuits are like a freeway. The more lanes we have, the more room there is for flow. The less lanes we have, the more restriction we have. So 
that's something to think about. That's why if you plug a, uh, an extension cord into a wall and you plug in a blender and you plug in your toaster and you plug in every little thing, right? Christmas lights, whatever you got going on. Um, if you plug all those things in and you turn them on, you will blow the circuit breaker and nothing will work. Well, why did the circuit breaker break? Because you, uh, because you increased the amount of lanes to the freeway, meaning that you increased your current flow in the circuit. And I know that doesn't make any sense. You're like, but there's more work being done. Because it's a parallel circuit, we have a lot more current flow because it has more lanes, like a freeway, to flow. Hopefully that makes sense. So um, that's, that's how our parallel circuit goes. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, your circuit protection, the circuit breaker is just like a fuse. It gets thrown off by too much amperage too much flow, too much amperage, meaning you're gonna pop a fuse. So if you're wiring something in, uh, let's say you're putting in an aftermarket set of fog lights or whatever it might be, and you're sort of tapping off of a circuit and you're turning it into a, a larger parallel circuit, you wanna be careful there because that's adding branches to a parallel circuit. You're adding lanes to the freeway. And even though you're adding loads, you're actually creating less resistance in the circuit and you could cause a fuse to blow. So that's, again, why we're talking about a lot of this theory stuff is because um, it does apply. So that's how you deal with a parallel circuit when you're trying to design something. Again, this is not an electrical class. It's more of a, a twin up an electrical class, meaning I want to get really more into how you are going to use the circuit itself. So um, just throwing that in there here. Uh, let's go ahead and talk briefly about series parallel circuits. A uh, series parallel circuit is a little bit different, um, but first I'm going to go back to screen sharing and uh, we will talk about how the parallel circuit is. There we go. Uh, Oops. Oh, it doesn't talk about series parallel circuit. So if we look here, this is a picture. Um, we've got a four amp load and a two, or I'm sorry, a, a three ohm load and a six ohm load. Um, and you can see here, we've got four amps in one branch, two amps in the other, which gives us a TCR of six amps here. So this is an example here of a parallel circuit. Um, but before we get into wiring diagrams, let me stop share here. I do want to just briefly talk about series parallel circuits. Seri series parallel circuits are the last two circuits all, all in one here. Um, let me get rid of all this. A series parallel circuit can look like one of two ways. Uh, so I can have a circuit that looks like this meaning that I've got a load in series with my parallel circuit. That's a series parallel circuit. I can also have what's kind of known as a parallel series circuit, meaning that I've got uh, two bulbs in one branch. Some of you guys might have been thinking about that when I was in the parallel circuit, like what if I have two bulbs in one branch, then it's no longer a parallel circuit, it is a series parallel circuit or a parallel series circuit. It does act quite a bit differently. The rules are a little bit different. I don't want to get into it in this class, but just so you know, we do run these every so often, um, but very small amounts are <laughs> in very small amounts in automotive. Um, most of your circuits, uh, over 90% of your circuits are going to be parallel type circuits. Um, if we run a series parallel circuit, it's probably going to be a blower motor circuit, like for your AC. So instead of a light bulb here, what we'll do, um, if there's also an assimilated, I want to show you guys, let's say, um, let's say I've got a motor here. Motors look like a little piece of candy. Let's say I've got two motors. Okay. 
like that. And it said, uh, what I can do is if I want to vary the speed of these motors, I can put a variable resistor in there. Meaning that when you turn the knob to slow the speed down for your AC motors, let's just say there's two, I'm just um, throwing that out there. Uh, what I can do is I can increase the resistance here. If I increase the resistance here, the voltage coming out is going to be less. Therefore, these motors will spin slower um, and the current is also going to be lower. If I lessen the resistance here, it acts, uh, I've got more voltage coming out, which is going to increase the speed of these motors. So without getting too crazy into things, that would be where you might see um, a series parallel. Um, but they are sort of sprinkled about in the car. You see them a lot less uh, around than, than you do normal parallel circuits. Your brake lights, your steer, or, uh, sorry, your uh, headlights, uh, most things are in, in your vehicle are going to be a parallel circuit. Um, most of your series parallel are dim, dimmer circuits or, or for slowing things down, but that's parallel circuits. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here, and the next video will be on wiring diagrams. I know this is super lengthy. Thank you guys for hanging in there. Normally, this would be two weeks worth of lectures. That's why there's so many videos. Um, but uh, we're, we're sort of pressed for time and trying to catch up and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, continue through. The next video will be wiring diagrams. I may end up throwing this up tomorrow. We'll see how late this goes.